20 to 24 was the era of Michael Saylor. He defined that epoch of Bitcoin uh, with his big, big buys uh, of Bitcoin. And now we're entering into a new era, the, the Larry Finks of the world. And I'm looking over there at the middle, mid East at uh, Saudi Aramco, you know, is a huge company with a lot of cash. I think they should get into Bitcoin. I think these are going to be the new mega players in the sovereign states and the sovereign wealth funds who are going to start buying, buying big into Bitcoin. So it's this new era that we're entering into. And we should say thank you to Michael Saylor because he did a fantastic job in taking Bitcoin. In my view, he took it out of the the, the gutter uh, because when he was he appeared on the scene, people were in the shitcoin world, like the Bitcoin caches and the Bitcoin's um, Satoshi visions and all these other coins and projects and failed nightmares were had some agency. People did give them a little bit of play, but when Michael Saylor appeared. And he was so articulate and so brilliant and so uh, so aggressive in his Bitcoin position that he really put everybody in the shade and he did a great job doing that. And he's, I think, really a hero, a Bitcoin hero. Max Kaiser is an OG of the Bitcoin community. He first bought into Bitcoin in 2011 with his first purchases made when Bitcoin was just $1. Ever since, Max Kaiser's mission has been to orange pill as many people as he can and he has been screaming from the rooftops for investors to buy Bitcoin since the beginning. As a result, he has made many investors rich. In his latest interview, Kaiser explained why he believes Bitcoin is heading into a new era. Michael Saylor brought Bitcoin to a new level, however now it's time for the Black Rocks, pension funds and sovereign wealth funds of the world to take the reins and push Bitcoin to new heights. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video where Max breaks down why he has 100% certainty that the fiat money system is going to collapse. Also, only a small percentage of my viewers are actually subscribed. If you enjoy finance content, consider subscribing or liking the video. It's free and you can always change your mind. Now here's Max with his Bitcoin outlook. Well, the we have the collapse of fiat money. I know the fiat money experiment, which is about 300 years old, and then it got very aggressive in the early 1970s in the US when they went off the gold standard. We went up on a pure fiat money world. So the results of this are predictably catastrophic, right? The total jet debt for global debt is um, it's just skyrocketing to new highs. The US debt keeps going up. And so we're going to head into the big reset at some point. And in one corner will be fiat money in another corner, which includes CBDC, central bank digital currency. That's another fiat money. Another corner will be gold. And then in the other corner will be Bitcoin. So it'll be a showdown between these three forms of money to see who wins. And I think the smart money is on Bitcoin. Certainly fiat money is going to lose. Uh, I think gold is also in the process of being demonetized by Bitcoin. Gold is very sluggish in its price action because of Bitcoin. It's being demonetized by Bitcoin the same way gold demonetized silver. Silver. Yep. Gold is being demonetized by Bitcoin. So it's never really going to catch up at this point. And it'll go to effectively to zero against Bitcoin. I mean, it'll there'll still be a price for it, but it'll be effectively zero. I yeah, think until we get to the final Bitcoin is like a hundred and something, 20 years or something out in the future. The same thing with the, these currencies. But I think, you know, the important thing to look at is uh, the closer one is to layer one money and those, the three, like, it's hard to be layer one money. Everybody thinks just because, you know, there's like 2 million altcoins and there's hundreds, well, like dozens of international currencies that it's easy, but it's not easy. That's why they so many of them go rapidly to zero. We have gold, the US dollar and Bitcoin and those three, right? So uh, El Salvador was already on the US dollar standard. Uh, anyone, any country the closest to uh, either US dollar standard or all of those oil rich countries which sell their commodities for, you know, their oil for dollars, all commodity countries, uh, they sell their, their, their commodities for dollars. So those are pretty much on a US dollar standard as well already because of the vast amounts of dollars they receive. So it's easier for them to therefore also introduce Bitcoin because they're they're not in, at risk of having no other fiat currency, the best fiat currency out there, right? So it could be the oil rich countries. It could be Bhutan, by the way, as well. So 
uh, oil that they sell or vast quantities of stranded energy. And Bhutan had a mass amount of stranded hydro. So now they're apparently mining. We don't know how much they're mining, but it looks pretty significant. So they're already pretty much from what we've seen uh, on a Bitcoin standard already as well. It's hard to be first. And I think we have seen that, right? Michael Saylor was first. And I think, well, also you have to remember that Elon Musk was also yeah. involved uh, and, and put that on his balance sheet and still has it on the, I believe it's the Tesla balance sheet uh, from that same period right after Michael Saylor. So to be fair, he has uh, stuck with his Bitcoin position, most of it, at least on Tesla's balance sheet. And so those two were first. Elon Musk doesn't talk about it as much. He rarely talks about Bitcoin these days. But El Salvador, for a nation state, I think it was President Bukele. Definitely also, like you said, Michael Saylor will go down in history as the, as the best investor. But certainly President Bukele will go down in history as one of the greatest leaders ever in, in history. So I think you'll see that. And yes, when it's super, super safe and when pretty much the U.S. gives the go ahead, then other countries will follow because it is very difficult to stand up against the humiliation. Michael Saylor did, right? As you, as you said, people were mocking him. Many people were mocking him as it kept on going down and, and down and down. The same thing happened with El Salvador. We, you know, we were here, we've been working for President Bukele and we, we know what it was like to withstand all of the, not only the media, but the international institutions who were uh, expressed concern about El Salvador and things like that. So. I think most people, that famous video of the, you know, the first, the leader goes out there and dances and then it takes a while of, of being out there looking like a fool. And then the second one comes and dances with the first leader and then a whole crowd comes. So I think uh, whoever, th there will be a second follower to El Salvador soon, I feel in the next 18 months because the the bull market this bull market usually drives that sort of adoption at the at the high level so i think there's going to be another smaller country like el salvador you know el salvador is almost like a city state right so it's six and a half million people here that's a small that's smaller than new york city i say you know bitcoin's not for everybody you know it's like in the bible that says the path narrows you know, you have to constantly be working on yourself to be your moral, your ethical, your your own. You have to work on yourself constantly to keep up with Bitcoin because Bitcoin is perfect money. If you don't put the work into keeping yourself cleansed of fiat money and all the nonsense, you will be destroyed by Bitcoin. And we say that Bitcoin is kind of like the ark. And El Salvador is like the ark and that not everyone's going to make it. And the, the gene pool may not have Jamie Dimon's family in it anymore because they have made themselves extinct by going with the wrong, they, they've taken the wrong, they've hard forked themselves from humanity, which is maybe great for us because we don't want those genes in the gene pool going forward. They're too stupid. He's just too stupid. That's the bottom line is that he's a guy who has achieved his success by um, essentially, he should definitely have imposter syndrome for real. He's an imposter. So there's Max Kaiser, a true pioneer in the Bitcoin space. It's evident that his insights and convictions have not only shaped his journey, but have also illuminated the path for countless others. From his early days of acquiring Bitcoin at just $1 to his relentless efforts in advocating for the cryptocurrency, Max's narrative is a testament to the transformative power of belief and foresight. Today, Max has once again captivated us with his vision for Bitcoin's future, a new era where entities like BlackRock, pension funds, and sovereign wealth funds are poised to take the baton from individuals like Michael Saylor and propel Bitcoin into unprecedented realms. Anyway guys, hope you all enjoyed today's video and that provided you with some value. I'll see you all in the next one, and as always,